This one is 3.8. Here we have a simply supported beam. There are these two supports here. So maybe reaction R1 here, R2 here. There's a distributed load and there's a point load here. So to start, let's find out these values of R1 and R2. So for that purpose, we can replace this distributed load by a point load right at the center here. And the value of this force is going to be 1.5 times 1.5 distance, which is 2.25 kilonewtons. And the distance here to here is going to be half of this, so 0. 75 meters. So let's write the force balance equation. So R1 plus R2 should balance this and this here equals to 3.75 kilonewtons. And if I take movement about this first point, we get 1.5 kilonewtons times 1.5 meters. This is for this force. Now R2 is going to give you a counterclockwise. So we can write it on the other side. So R2 times 3.5 75 because this is 1.5 and this is 2.25 and this side we are going to have a movement coming from this also so 2.25 times the total length of the beam which is 4.5 meters in this case so if you solve you get r2 value which is 3.3 kilonewtons and following this right here we get r1 equals to 0.45 kilonewtons now to analyze the shear force and bending movements, we can make three cuts here. So this is your cut number one, cut number two, and this is your cut number three here. So let's draw the free boy diagrams for cut number one. It will be easy for us to analyze the left part here. So we have this R1 here. And since we have a positive face opening up, so we are going to have V1 and MV1 acting in this manner. The distance of cut is always x so this is what we get so if i analyze this you can see that your v1 value is going to be equals to minus r1 that is this it's minus 0 0.45 kilonewtons and your mv1 in this case is going to be r1 times x so 0 0.45 times x kilonewton meter for cut 2 we can again analyze the left part here so if i draw the free body diagram I have this R1 here, then I have this 1.5 at a distance of 1.5, cut is always made at a distance of x. We have a positive face opening here, so we have V2 and MV2. So if you notice here, your V2 is going to balance your 1.5 minus R1, so R1 value is 0 0.45, so your V2 value is going to be 1.05 kN. Now for MB2, if I take movement about this point, I can write MB2 equals to R1 times X minus 1.5 times this distance right here, which is going to be X minus 1.5. So if I substitute the value of R1 there, I get the value of MB2 as minus 1.05 X and plus 2.25. For cut 3, I can analyze the right part here, which is easier for us to analyze. So I can draw this beam, which has this uniformly distributed load. Now since we are cutting it at a distance of x, the leftover length is 4.5 minus x. I can replace this distributed force by a point load here, which is going to be 1.5, which is the distributed load times the distance, so 4.5 minus x here. This one is a negative phase, so we get V3 and MV3 in this manner right here. So if I solve for these values, I can see that V3 value is going to be balancing this one. So 1.5 times X minus 4.5 and your MV3. Now this point load will be right in the middle here. So it's going to be minus 1.5 X minus 4.5 whole square divided by 2. So force is this, the distance is going to be 4.5 minus x by 2, that's why square and divide by 2. So this is the value of mv3. So now we have got all these three values, so we can start plotting these. So I've drawn the axis set up here. So this distance is x equals to 1.5, this is x equals to 3.75. So let's plot this, v1 is for the cut one meaning in this segment right here value is minus 0.45 so we can plot it right here 
Now V2 value is 1.05, so it's going to be something like this. This is 1.05 right here. Now V3 is a linear function. We need two values to plot this line. One is at 4.5, which is the right end. If you substitute x equals to 4.5 here, we get 0 right there. And if you substitute the value of x equals to 3.75 here, we are going to get minus 2.25. It's going to be somewhere there. So we can connect it in this manner. So this is the curve that you get for the shear force diagram. This value right here is minus 2.25. And we can highlight the boundaries of this curve. So this is how your shear force diagram looks in this case. Now these values are slightly off in terms of proportion. This is only 1 and this is minus 2.25. So this should be drawn a little more downwards. Now looking at your bending movement, let's plot MB1. This is a straight line. So at x equal to 0, we are going to start somewhere here. And the other end for this is going to be x equals to 1.5 if i substitute 1.5 here i get a value which is 0 0.675 so i can connect this this is 0 0.675 now in the middle part we have another straight line which has a slope that is negative so it's going to drop down so we need two values again for this we can evaluate this at two points 1.5 and 3.75 at 1.5 we get the same value as we have got from mb1 now from 3.75 we get a value which is 1.69 so it's going to be somewhere here so i can connect both of these points in this manner so this value is minus 1.69 right here and the last segment this is a parabola negative coefficient so it's going to be opening down at x equals to 4.5 they should have a value zero and at x equals to 3.75 which is this point if i substitute i get the same exact value that we have got from here now for this if you look at the slope also here slope is going to be zero at this point looking at the shear force also we can understand that because the shear force is zero there so i can draw this parabola so that your slope becomes zero at 4.5 so this is the bending moment diagram that we have got on the positive side this is the highest value we have and on the negative side this is the highest value we have we can mark the boundary again in this curve also so this is your boundary of the curve for completeness we can draw the convention that we have used this is for the shear force and this one is for the moment